Thank you everyone for watching and filming our I'm really excited to be able to talk to you uh, under this fantastic uh, program of Indie Dog. I feel very proud and excited that they've chosen to screen this film uh, throughout uh, your network. This idea of the film came to my mind uh, almost four or five years back when I first saw this uh, photo in a newspaper where I saw uh, hundreds of people were like trying to stop water bath in mud and almost half naked and this one photo actually uh, stayed in my mind it was like it struck me with this whole um, uh, the kind of it intrigued me the kind of agility and the courage of these people have and I, I started traveling in the remote places where these photos were formed without having any specific plan in my mind and I just traveled through um, uh, the places uh, in a traditional boat. Uh, even before I knew, I, I, I just found that I traveled for almost three months on and off. And uh, in a stretch of 200 kilometers of uh, remote coastal belts of Bangladesh. And more I traveled, more I came to know this about these people, more I was feeling very intrigued. Because uh, me being a city dweller, I was really I was really challenged by the kind of agility, the kind of courage these people actually always uh, uh, breathe in their breath and the kind of uh, beauty they, they inhabited with, the kind of uh, sense of uh, one's belongingness to one's soil and nature and how they deal it. It was really fascinating. I was very fascinated. I was very fascinated. I was very obsessed with this place and I even before again I knew I spent on this very specific location almost uh, the film you saw the village Sutakali I stayed there for almost 20 months uh, shooting this rush on and off again sometimes I would go for uh, three days and I will stay for three weeks sometimes I will go for four weeks and then I come back for only four days it was never planned I always had to cope my design my plans according to the villagers plan like the way they actually and go the way they plan because uh, if you look at the the dam construction the way the final construction where they actually put up the the block the water this was uh, this is something they did two years back when I was not there and it was washed away in the, uh, within two weeks and this time also they were really very they were really very like uh, not sure that it would hold it will like uh, really save them from water but finally um, uh, one fund mining they said today today we are going to do it we are done like they have been working on that for months but uh, weeks and but uh, the way that very date was not really fixed so i had to always uh, like adjust everything to the location according to the plans and also coming to the individual stories the kind of narrative like if you recall the first sequence where you see this mom and uh, his kid talking to each other under a mosquito net. I knew this character, I knew this kid, I knew they had this relationship, I knew they, they do that thing every morning or uh, every night on in bed and I wanted to capture the moment. And one day I actually told the woman, Rocky, the lady, that uh, how can I really shoot it? How can I, I, I really want to shoot this moment of yours? which is very private, which is very uh, intimate, but at the same time, it's very. I, I feel very, like, uh, I can't actually do without shooting it. I have to shoot it. Then she suggested me, why don't you just uh, sleep with us? You can sleep on the next bed and in the same room, and uh, you can do it when we do it. So I was kind of, wow, how open and how inviting these people are. Like, they are asking me, as a filmmaker, to stay under the same roof in the next bed, with the family just to capture that moment. So I must be thankful to all these like uh, divine interventions. Like uh, when the I didn't know when the, exactly the dumping will happen, and I was there. This lady, the moment, and uh, if you recall the very first shot when you saw the, uh, see this uh, uh, bank uh, in a dark uh, dark uh, night, just before the mother and kid starts talking to uh, start this internet sequence. There's a small moon and clouds moving, and I was waiting for this very short for three hours. Like I, I knew exactly uh, within a cycle of high tide and low tide, there's one day when uh, there would be equal amount of water and equal amount of 
like mud uh, at the minute of sunset. So I wanted that shot to happen in sunset when it is not dry, neither it is wet. So I waited, I calculated that day, so I waited for that day and then I shot that day. And at the minute of shooting, I just noticed on the camera screen that a cloud is actually coming and hiding, uh, like shadowing the moon. So this is some magic moment, like uh, you can't actually plan these moments, you can't actually, uh, you have to be there. And also when I was shooting, I was like, I was lost with this 170 hours of uh, footage. I had that much footage, like 170 hours and I was like, uh, I could not uh, really make any <coughs> editor to sit with me and see all these rushes uh, in my in my reach. So I came to know about Shoikot and uh, I was really mm, impressed uh, with one of his, um, one of his very small short uh, on Hiram so, uh, so, uh, so. Uh, and I was, uh, I was kind of, we, we had a different kind of sync, you know, uh, like this uh, Shoikot uh, from Mr. FTI, Shoikot was the editor and uh, me had a different kind of sync on this project and we actually Actually, I, I believe that he also equally believed in the project the way I believed. So that is the reason we had this thing and we had this like long sessions, long session, weeks, months and almost a year. It went on and off, on and off and even before we locked the picture, uh, I remember, even after we locked the picture, I remember rerunning the whole rush, uh, the whole lineup for um, almost 21 times in three days and changing a lot like uh, put, bring it here and there and things like that so i was really lucky in many senses i was there i tried my best but at the same time like i remember we, we had this first rush lineup of 150 minutes and uh, there was this program in berlin uh, berlin Ale, uh, talent campus uh, where they invited uh, nine uh, projects that year uh, in the editing lab and this was one of them and uh, I, I send them 150 hours of uh, 150 minutes of rush line. And in the six days of working session with the uh, Balinale mentor, uh, I, I was uh, with the editor mentor I, I worked with in DFB in Germany, in Berlin. We went through this 150 minutes rush again and again and again and again. And really, I could really dig down to myself, like what I want to make, why I want to make this film. And I believe uh, more of you people can see the film, more of you people can listen to what I am listening. The question, where the title comes from, are you listening? The song of life, the, the song of uh, believing into something, the song of dreaming into something, and this whole whole charismatic energy that we all human beings actually hold that yet to be, I think, explored, I think yet to be properly acknowledged. Last of all, I must thank Indie Talk specifically for one another reason, not because for choosing my film, not because screening this film, but also because through this platform and this very program, they have like, uh, they have like uh, opened a different uh, pros prospect of like not only for India but also for the whole South Asian filmmakers who can really come into come closer, who can actually work, uh, share their works and uh, like I am sharing from Bangladesh to you in many corners of India and I, be I believe in coming years uh, from every corner of South Asia I will be sharing other corners uh, of works and that is how I believe uh, things will change. Thank you.